Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, yeah, as Michael says, my name is Ian McGowan. I'm a lecturer in education and mental health at, the, at Queen's. Uh, prior to that, I worked as a lecturer in mental health nursing at UU. Uh, so I've got experience of both the, the institutions on the island. My background is as a mental health nurse, uh, and I'm coming at this particular one probably from up. I think I'm finding it hard to separate the academic from the, the, the nursing viewpoint, uh, but I, I will try my best. I bring with me apologies from my colleagues Phil Wilson and Lucy Thompson, uh, both from the University of Aberdeen, who have other stuff on today and with the difficulties we had in getting the, 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 the seminar set up, uh, they weren't able to make it. Uh, what I plan to do is just simply take you through some of the background as to why maternal mental health uh, is important, uh, primarily at a clinical level uh, and, and the impact that it has on individuals. Uh, and then look at two evaluations of the Mellow Parenting Programme, which have been running recently in Northern Ireland. Uh, one of which Lu Lu Lucy was involved in the South Eastern Trust, uh, and I, I, along with one of my colleagues in the Southern Health and Social Care Trust, have just published one uh, in, no in November last year. And, uh, and so try and bring all that together. A couple of things I need, well, one, two, three things I need to make you aware of. Uh, in the abstract, first of all, uh, that, that, that came out advertising this, uh, th there's a comment that the Public Health Agency funded both programmes, and that's not correct, uh, and that's my error, and I apologise. Uh, I think the South Eastern Health Social Care Trust is funded by Children's Services within the Trust, uh, so I apologise for that. Uh, Secondly, the male well, as there is only two, the male parenting organisation based in Glasgow uh, was established and set up by, by Dr. Christine Puckering at the University of Glasgow. Uh, and both Phil and Lucy have worked with and have published with Christine and the male and parenting organisation. Again, you just need to be aware of that. Uh, as, as Mark said about being an academic and being upfront, uh, you need to bear what I'm saying in, in that context. Okay, I'm going to now try and work with technology. I'm not 21, incidentally. Uh, okay, maternal mental health. The, 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 there's a huge body of evidence which shows that the, 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 the impact that, that maternal mental health or, or pregnancy and new motherhood can have, uh, primarily on, on, on the new mothers. Uh, Generalised anxiety disorder, for example, is reported in about 8% of new mothers. Uh, coming up, 3% uh, for post-traumatic stress disorder, panic disorders at 3%. Uh, one in five mothers meet the diagnostic criteria for mild to moderate depression. That's <coughs> approaching 20% of, of our new mothers. Uh, and again, there's a, a plethora of evidence to show that, that actually the, the leading cause of maternal death is actually suicide, it's new mothers taking their own lives within the first 12 months uh, of that. Uh, myself with Professor Malin Sinclair and Mark Owens in 2007, and again the Confidential, Confidential Inquiry into Maternal and Child Health, uh, again reported that in 2015. Uh, suicide rate in perinatal period of 2%, uh, aged women 6, 50 and 4% amongst younger women. Uh, now, if you, if you compare that to our suicide rates at the moment, which are about 25 in every 100,000, so it's, uh, yeah, I've just gone blank. Uh, but again, there's a substantial increase in relation to the, the risk of suicide uh, in that sort of perinatal and, and, and new mother period. That's the impact on the mother, but it also has an impact on the on the child, on, on, on the infant development. Uh, psychiatric issues, the, the, the impact that having a mother, particularly with a mental health problem, has on the child uh, is well established. Uh, again, Lucy Thompson uh, reported in 2014 a number of, of systematic review identifying things like conduct disorders, ADHD, adolescent depression, are all associated with having a mother with a mental health problem. Uh, similarly, social development issues, 
again were reported in that. Uh, conduct disorder came up quite a bit in relation to having a mother with a mental health problem. And again, that's quite well established. Uh, the one that's not there is actually academic achievement. And again, having a mother with a mental health problem uh, appears to be associated with a higher school dropout rate. Uh, and for those children who do, do stay on at school, they uh, it tend to have a lower academic achievement as well. Factors influencing maternal uh, uh, emotional mental health. And you get the normal stuff. I mean, I, th I think we have to realise that mothers are not these this sort of body that's out there. They're part of our society. So they have the normal stresses and strains that everybody else has. Uh, it's perhaps the pregnancy and the hormonal changes during pregnancy uh, and afterwards that can actually lead uh, to, to the development of mental health problems. Uh, fear. fear. Fear's an interesting one and it seems to be coming up uh, quite a bit. The actual fear of childbirth. And, and actually giving up, I and mean, there's a lot of stuff I know. Uh, one of my colleagues at UU, Professor Marlene Sinclair, uh, is doing a bit of work around trauma and fear and anticipatory fear of childbirth uh, and, and things like that. Uh, so th th that can, can, can play a role uh, in influencing the mother's mental health. Intimate par partner violence, again, c can have an impact on depressive symptoms, uh, as well as the hormonal changes. Psychotic episodes, such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, uh, again, can be kicked off by pregnancy uh, and, uh, and birth, uh, and again, things like postpartum psychosis, as well as the postnatal depression. Uh, perhaps a history of mental health problems. So again, going back to the fact that pregnant women and new mothers are not this way apart, they don't sit outside. Uh, and a previous history of having mental health problems can lead to psychotic episodes. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder, sexual assault, uh, childhood sexual abuse, unplanned pregnancy, all of these sort of things are related to the development of PTSD. Uh, either through becoming pregnant as a result of sexual assault or some form of sexual abuse, uh, or actually having some sort of stored memory, which is re uh, revisited or rebooted, for want of a better term, yeah, coming into that. Uh, so PTSD can have a big impact on the mental health of pregnant women and new mothers. Parents and programmes per se, uh, generally speaking, are both clinically effective and cost effective. Uh, there's, again, quite a bit of evidence now. The, the quality of the evidence is debatable. Uh, a systematic review published by, by Phil Wilson uh, you know, was quite critical of the, the, the Triple P programme in particular. Uh, and some of the, the, the groups in which it was used, for example, you know, in, in terms of the, the using it in deprived communities, the evidence wasn't great about that. The evidence of triple P around using it in younger children, again, for example, uh, at, at that time wasn't great. But I think we have to acknowledge that, you know, that there is evidence there that it's both clinically effective and does what it's supposed to do. Uh, and I was reading this morning, actually, there's a relatively new study showing that it's, it's, it's cost effective as well uh, and coming in substantially below the, the, the threshold for funding as the, uh, the United States based one. Uh, similarly, the, the Incredible Years uh, programme, it, it comes in uh, on the Strength and Difficulties questionnaire uh, and offers some very clinically significant improvements uh, in that particular one. So there is, a, there is evidence which shows that actually working with the parents improves the infant's mental health and their outcomes. Male parenting itself, uh, as I said earlier, was developed in Glasgow uh, by Dr. Christine Puckering. Uh, it's this, this landed on my lap <laughs> as to uh, how I got involved. 
Uh, and I have to say, but when, when you sit and you talk to people who are, who, who are involved in it, I think it's a really innovative programme. Uh, and, and, and you can see there, it has a, a sound theoretical basis uh, by John Bob, uh, it's underpinned by John Bobby's attachment theory, uh, along with social learning and cognitive theories. Uh, it runs for just over three months. So there's 14 sessions, one a week. Uh, includes lunchtime activities for the child and the mother. So the child and the mother are go along to the programme, crash facilities are made available for the child, but over lunchtime they spend time together. Uh, and, uh, and doing that, uh, and get it includes homework, uh, and then there are mealtime or other, or other, in, other interactions videos. Uh, so the mothers are sent home with instructions either through their phone or given video recorders uh, to video at mealtime. Uh, and they go back and they discuss it in the groups and things like that. The other thing in relation to certainly the Southern Trust, which was the, the I did, was that taxis were provided to and from the place as well. Uh, quite innovative, and, 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 and as we will see. Angus Macbeth uh, and myself and, and others in 2015 published a systematic review uh, of what we could find around Mellow Parenton. Uh, there are seven studies, I think, that w w which we managed to get. They're, they're in the briefing, which you, should be available to you tomorrow. And I've highlighted, I've only, there are actually six, but there really is only four, because you'll see that the two Russian studies have no data available. Uh, but again, as, I, I, as you go through, there's a couple of things just to perhaps... Uh, Right, first of all, sample sizes are very small. Uh, uh, and also none of them used that sort of randomised control design that we, or the, the, the Mark was talking about. Uh, but generally speaking, that where people were engaged in it, they had a positive outcome. Uh, interestingly, on the mother's mental health, uh, but no measurable effects on reactive adjustment disorder on the parent-child interaction. Uh, again, of the 12 children on child protection, 10 subsequently had their names removed. So again, in, in terms of the child's safety, there was no, or, or, or there was an improvement to w what we could draw out for the children there. Uh, as I say, the, the, the Russian ones. Uh, going down, Maori study in New Zealand. Uh, quite extremely positive responses to program resources and the number of requests for a program that fathers could attend. Uh, interestingly, they included the mothers and the grandmothers in that, and obviously that's, I would suggest that's probably a cultural thing, that grandmothers are heavily involved in uh, bringing up the children. Uh, and similarly, yet another study in Scotland, and again done by Christine Puckering. Uh, again, significant de difference in the levels of positive interactions between groups. So again, when mothers are actually working and being encouraged to spend time and interact with their children, uh, they're having a, a, a positive outcome. Uh, and again, the negative interaction between male babies and weight-loss control approach significance. So th those people who didn't get it, who, who were waiting, uh, the, the negative interactions were clinically significant or, or were clinically different. Uh, Although I have to admit, it says approach significance, which is academic way of another academic way of saying wasn't significant, uh, certainly statistically. Oh, the depression one hasn't hasn't came out. So what did we do? As I said earlier on, there were two uh, evaluations of, of male parenting going on uh, within Northern Ireland that, that, that we're aware of. This is the one that myself and my, my colleague Deirdre McParlin published last year. Uh, I should say that the sample size for this was only 21. Again, it's another small uh, sample. This is using the adult wellbeing scale, which is done. It measures outcomes on four specific scales. Anxiety, that's depression, inward irritability and outward ir irritability. And that sort of inward and outward irritability are feelings inward, for example, feelings of self-harm. Uh, thoughts of suicide, making suicide attempts, that sort of thing. Outward is perhaps slapping the child or hitting somebody else or hitting a wall or outwardly expressing uh, irritability. Uh, 
What I found really, really interesting is that at the, the pre-levels are fine. In all four scales that post, immediately after the, the, the programmes had finished, uh, there was a reduction. Uh, but I, this one I found more interesting, that after six months, not only was the reduction maintained, it was furthered. And actually, the, the improvements not just kept going, but actually continued to get better uh, after six months. Uh, and there was a slight decrease there, uh, or a slight increase again. Uh, and three of the four scales came up to 12 months. But even with that, at the end, three of the 12 were all significantly lower uh, than where they had been at the start. Uh, so we followed these 21 people over the, a, a period of 12 months. Uh, and I think the, the, the one thing that, that jumped out at me was that six months one. Uh, similarly, with the, the Warwick and Edinburgh mental, or mental wellbeing scale, uh, again, this time, the higher the, road, the, the, higher the score, uh, the, the better you are. And you can see the, the increase going from 40 to 52. Back down to 50, uh, 47, 48, uh, and again at 12 months. Uh, why that is, I have absolutely no idea. Again, I have no idea why that there seems to be a sort of, not only a sustained improvement, but a continued improvement. Uh, and I think that's perhaps something which maybe we need to look at at some point in the future. But uh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Southern Trust, uh, again, done by, by, by Lucy uh, and her, co her colleague. And, and this one is in preparation. So these are sort of preliminary results, uh, which is why there's not a great deal of detail from them, because they're not ready to, to, to go into it. Uh, but again, the participants in the male babies show a significant improvement in the quality of their interaction with their babies. Again, working with the, the, the mothers helped them interact better with their children. Uh, and participants merely showed increased outward directly uh, irritable scores, which is fine, and no significant difference in the other ones. So other than the interaction with the children in the South Eastern Trust, there doesn't appear to have been any statistically significant difference uh, between the two groups. Uh, so a slight difference in, in variation from two different parts of Northern Ireland. That, okay. Uh, the other part of the interact are the, the, the evaluations which we, we, bo both sites actually looked at was actually to ask the mother, what was it like? What was that sort of the, 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 the programme like? Uh, and these are just some of the quotes uh, from that. I've started planning these out with the children, seeing, saying, Mommy, what are we doing this weekend? Uh, taking day by day instead of thinking what's going to happen next. It created a better bond with my son. At the time, I didn't have a bond with him. I had postnatal depression, and they helped me. They made just just made me have fun with my child. Uh, and really, for me, it was opening up. Uh, nice to get all, and it's kind of making me a little bit a little bit more whole. And you can see that, that sort of bringing together of the individual again. The one that I got. Are you familiar with the film a Beautiful Mind? There's a wonderful scene in it uh, where John Nash's wife is walking across the park uh, out for a walk and they meet one of his friends, and, uh, or, or a friend of the family, and, and the, the family member says to her, how are you? And she replies, John's fine. And I thought she's lost a beautiful scene because she's lost all sense of identity. She loses... Uh, you know, she she doesn't she identifies herself as being John's wife, as opposed to being an individual in her own right. How are you, John's fine? And that bottom one that I'm not just a mummy. When I read that, or when I heard that, when I was doing the analysis, jumped into me. That particular participant had lost her sense of identity, and the male parenting program gave her it back. I'm not just a mummy. She identified herself as being a mother. That's all she was. Well, good, bad, or indifferent. Didn't, uh, you know, she's lost identity as a daughter, uh, perhaps as a sibling, uh, as a wife or a partner. That was all going. Uh, so actually, I'm beginning to realise as a person, you know, I'm, I, I'm not just a mummy. 
Uh, so much so that actually that's the title of the report uh, from the Southern Trust, uh, and that's where it came from. Uh, so it, 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 taking these, and I am conscious of the, the, the level of evidence in, in terms of how robust they are, uh, but hopefully that will come soon. Uh, but from what we have at the moment in the literature which is there, meloparentin is an effective and acceptable intervention uh, to improve the emotional well-being of vulnerable mothers, and there's some evidence also that improves the well-being of the children as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.